Howdy everyone, it's me once again, the one and only Killer Rodan. And today, I'm still technically still continuing my Disney movie marathon. And this time around, I'm going to be reviewing a book. And, and yes, it's a book that's related to movies, so it's still movie related, I guess. Um, I want to review more books anyway, folks. Uh, and that's the thing, I feel like in this channel, I don't really review enough books. I guess might as well make it be a Tinkerbell book. Whether it's graphic novels or just books in general, I mean. This one I'm going to be reviewing is the one entitled, this comic book, Tinkerbell and Her Magical Friends. I know in some ways this can be viewed as an excuse to bring up Tinkerbell, sure. But anyway, as usual, let's get into the plot of this comic book, shall we? Oh yeah. Mm. The first thing I must comment about the plot of this book is that it doesn't necessarily start off with Tinkerbell herself but rather her friends instead. The first chapter is friends are better than we see the character Silver Mist right in the beginning. She's a water fairy so we get to see her doing what she does. So she pretty much plays the role of the main character in this chapter folks and it's pretty obvious that it's gonna be something about with the cakes of course and just so you know folks this book is actually connected to all the films that made so far. Anyway, someone has made some cakes and she pretty much wants to bring it, everybody some cake as well and she's warning everyone that, well, they all better come and get some before they all run out pretty much. The thing is folks, she has to get some for herself. Would she? Hmm. It's all about sharing, right? But then in the next chapter we see that it's titled Beautiful Ribbon star of this one is none other than Rosetta herself folks and it should be pretty obvious that everybody's gonna get their own chapter in this book but anyway since Rosetta is a garden fairy and she's having a little trouble with what she's doing she wants to get stuff done and there's some other fairies that come in to pretty much help her out and of course she does let him obviously. Almost everybody comes in to help. Even though in the first film it was said that every fairy has to accept their own talents. So they can't really be helping really. So yeah. That's a bit of a head scratcher right there. So yeah how can they help. Anyway. So yeah she is requesting them to assist them. I mean you could always argue that she's probably being a bit lazy in this case. That's to be expected of course. There's some trouble coming along. And it does happen, obviously. But yeah, of course that's going to happen. Then in, in the next chapter, Hop Hop, the lead character in this chapter is none other than Fawn herself. And she's another fairy that I like in here, folks. So yeah, I was glad that she was added to the story in some sort of way. And her personality is very, very similar to Tinkerbell. Which explains as to why they will get along rather well. So anyway, in this story, she had to teach these bunnies how to hop of course so she decides to make it be a part of a race and of course she really wants them to learn because that's part of her job but however every fairy has their own job of course she makes one of them go ahead but one the other is just pretty much acts a little stubborn and just makes the other one go instead these little bunnies are pretty much young so they have to learn I guess you can say but, like I said before, there's, there's one that acts a little stubborn, I guess you can say. And just put him in state's put. So there's a little conflict there, I guess you can say. The character of Fawn did prove to be a rather popular character. So she did appear in several of the animated films for the Tinkerbell series. Which, of course, is totally fine by me, as far as I'm concerned. She is a likable character in her own little charming way, I guess you can say. But then moving on to the next chapter, an unusual invitation. We get to see that this character is the lead character in this particular chapter, which is fine, I guess, because she's another character I did enjoy. And I, in some ways, I kind of wish that she could have been presented more in this book. This is probably the only chapter that she was in. Especially considering the fact that she and Fawn really didn't get along at all and then on top of that she has her own warrior group which is pretty cool I guess you can say folks but anyway her and her friends pretty much 
have found this particular book. It's kind of like a mysterious book in which they have to look into. This book came from the library in Fairy, and then her and her warriors have to look at it for a brief moment. Of course, it's not long until it falls into Tinkerbell's hands, obviously. And yeah, she has, of course wants to look into it, obviously, folks. This graphic novel, or I should say a short storybook, isn't too bad, I suppose, folks. And in some ways, I kind of wish it was better. It's not necessarily a bad book by any means, but it's a decent read, I guess you can say. It's nothing too spectacular or anything, but it's a solid read, I suppose. I mean, while it's far from the best written children's novel, but it's fairly easy to read, and it's not that bad, of course. In some ways, I kind of wish they could have explored more of the characters' backgrounds and whatnot, and some of the others as well. And could have taken this as an opportunity to explain more, maybe more of their history, and maybe make expand on some themes and whatnot. And like this warrior character right here, folks, I brought up a moment ago. I guess there's not a whole lot. Of I can't say about this book, folks, because it's extremely it's short. Really Maybe a tad too short, if you ask me. And I do wish it was a bit longer. Tinker Bell and her magical yeah, friends yeah. felt like it was a missed opportunity, is what I'm saying here, folks. I don't necessarily hate this book, folks. I'd say it's worth reading if you're a Disney or Tinker Bell fan. But it just felt there was a lot left to be desired. Yes, I know, I know. This was aimed for kids. But that doesn't necessarily that mean it can't be a good book. Not a bad book by any means, but I, I felt it could have been better. Okay, some point, look at Pippi Longstocking. She had a ton of books that were highly successful and they were really, really good. And I also had a brief appearance in The Simpsons as well, and that was pretty good. And there was also uh, the animated TV show of Pippi Longstocking before it pretty much disappeared into obscurity. But I still enjoyed it. And I felt like they could have done the same thing, folks. Maybe a bit more effort could have been done into it. And perhaps, maybe case in point, look at these Star Wars books. Disney Studios have bought the rights for the Star Wars films. And they got some material from the books, more specifically the Legacy and Legend series. And they pretty much used some of it for the new film that came out recently. And that had a strong female lead in there, folks. Also, another one is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, which is also canon to the films as well, folks. And yes, there was a video game that was based on it as well, folks, which is pretty cool. And there was also a comic book version of it as well. And they're all connected to the original Star Wars trilogy. So yeah, folks, a lot of material can be used for this. And I feel like there's lots of stuff, lots of material that could be used for the books of Tinkerbell. And there's plenty of opportunity that could be used here, folks. And I felt that this was definitely a missed opportunity, folks. And the dialogue is pretty decent, I guess you can say. It's pretty cheesy at times, but I was not expecting great dialogue or anything, but oh well, I suppose. The artwork is pretty decent, I guess you can say, folks. It's not horrible. Oh. And I did like the colors in the backgrounds and all the characters, too. And the shading itself isn't too bad either. Or the artwork is pretty well crafted, folks. And it doesn't get boring, I tell you that. The original Alice Wonderland book is known for its wordplay and clever writing. And even Disney himself has done his own version of the book. And it turned out to be a really good movie overall. So yeah, the writing in this book isn't nowhere near as good as that, but... The writing is still pretty solid, I guess. But at the very least, it, it's better than some of the fan fiction stuff okay. I've read over the years, folks. And the door, yeah. The less I say about that, the better, folks. And I just wish I could have spent more time in the writing itself. And probably explore some things. Maybe it would have been a better book, is what I'm saying, folks. Again, not horrible. But it did have the potential to be better than what was delivered, is what I'm saying. So, there's that. So yeah, folks, this book wasn't too bad, I suppose. I enjoyed it. I mean, there's a few other things I'd like to bring up that uh, happens in here, but of course I don't want to spoil it. But it's like a chapter book, folks, overall. It's, sort of t it's entertaining in its own little way, I suppose. I didn't hate it. You know, it, it entertained me enough to like it. So, it, it's fairly simple, I guess you can say. 
but it does have conflicts with its own with its own little storyline because there's always there always needs to be a conflict of course and each chapter has its own little problems its own little troubles i guess it's like a, it's pretty much like a an adventure book yeah that's pretty much what it is and a, a simple adventure book oh yeah I recommend it if you if you like Tinkerbell and you like Disney movies. I guess you could enjoy it. I guess I did, and it's fairly simple to read, of course. So this comic book, Tinkerbell, I know her magical friends. So yeah, the characters have their own little adventure thing with your folks, and yeah, it's something I guess I could recommend anyway. I suppose I say check it out. Just don't expect too much from it. It's not horrible. It, Tinkerbell and her magical friends, it gets an overall rating of a 5.5 out of 10, folks. It gets a 5.5 out, out of 10 from me. So, yeah, there's that, folks. Mmm, oh, yeah. As always, thanks for watching, and take care. See ya. Oh, yeah.